Hi, music theory students. Uh, this is the fourth video about the minuet. At this point, I'm going to show you how you would compose a minuet and the harmonic rhythm of a minuet. Um, so, and you, you will see that in the way that we compose it. So this will be very brief. We won't get into it in too much more detail, but it really helps you understand um, how a minuet is made and how um, to analyze a minuet as well. Okay, so um, we, like everything in the, in the Harmony Through Melody, Horton and Ritchie textbook, we always start with a cantus. Okay, so we start with a cantus. This one is in G major, and we, we have a perfect authentic cadence at the end. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to divide it in half, because remember our minuet is in two um, halves, okay, an A part and a B part, and we analyze it for tonicizations, prolongations, or even a possible sequence. So if you notice here, if the soprano is moving up by step, the bass could move up by step actually in octaves at this ba basic level, and you could actually have a sequence uh, to begin this one. Um, but again, we wanna follow those harmonic patterns. We wanna start with one. You wanna look and see what you can do. We're in major in this way, so it'd be really good to be able to do a tonicization to five, which we have here. Okay, so we, we're going from one to five. Here, we're starting on what will end up being a four chord and we return to one here and then we do a perfect authentic cadence in one, okay? So we're following that harmonic. Remember back a few videos ago, I talked about how the harmonic rhythm, how things have to move uh, from one to five or the harmonic movement from one to five or one to three are all those options, okay? So, we're, um, so we wanna prepare for an internal cadence in, at the end of the first half and a perfect authentic cadence at the end of the second half. Okay, then we add the bass to this so that we have our outer voice framework. It's always really important to have this outer voice framework. So we're uh, now establishing this tonic at the beginning. We go to five, uh, we start elsewhere, we move back to one, and then we have our perfect authentic cadence. Now, this is where you're gonna see this harmonic rhythm that I'm gonna be coming back to a few times. So what you do for both the first half and the second half is you expand that first, the first three chords. So we don't just put chord by chord on each measure because in a minuet, there's a very distinct pattern of elongating the, harmon the harmonic rhythm at the beginning. Okay, so we take the first, the third, and the fifth chords, and it goes on beat one, sorry, in the first measure, the third measure, and the fifth measure, and then we squish the remaining into this final cadence. And there's a few different ways that we could do this, not the final cadence, but the internal cadence. There's a few different ways that you can do this. This is one, we could actually have it more squished to the right, but here it's really nice to have a full five of the five to end the first half, okay? So we do this over the first eight measures. You do the same thing over the second eight measures. Sorry, that this is here. You do the same thing over the, um, second eight measures, right? So having these spaces in between. And then we fill in these in order to basically repeat the chord. So we're gonna have two tonic chords in a row at the beginning, then two dominants, and then we get back to the tonic here. And so we add in those, we add in um, melodic figures that will confirm the harmony that has that, that has um, come from that first chord. So here we have a tonic, a tonic, a dominant, a dominant that resolves to our tonic. And then we have a really small, so one, four, one prolongation here. So we've extended this as one big long prolongation of one here, um, but we also have um, a little prolongation within that as well. Okay, so we've completed the structure with uh, those empty voices. Uh, places with um, chord tones of the prevailing chord. And we do this for the second half as well. I didn't show the melodic figures here, but you can see there's a skip step, a double skip, but all confirming the overarching harmony that's happening here. Okay, um, from here then, we need to be thinking about elaborating the melody. Okay, so notice, we're selecting a phrase pattern. I've been talking about four and four and two and four, two plus two plus four. So this phrase pattern here has been selected. So two plus two plus four and the second half four and four. That just means that we're gonna be wanting to do some repetitions here. From there, 
you could just put this above and then move directly to the extra elaboration, but sometimes you're used to sort of in quadruple paraphrase, we have a elaboration and then we elaborate again. So here you can see first we're using trochaic and tribrachic rhythms to do your elaboration here. And then we're using even more, including instrumental figures. We've added poggiaturas, we're doing a retardation at the end, we have a suspension over here. So you can use all of those things that you've learned up until, up until now through our extra decoration with those um, appoggiaturas and retardations, which put non-chord tones on those strong beats. So we have a primary rhythmic profile that then moves into a contour um, employing the full complement of our elaborative, our elaborative figuration. So including our instrumental melodic figures uh, and so forth. Once you have a full decoration of that soprano, the lower voices get added, but the lower voices get added and they're really accompanying voices. It's the, it's the violin in this case that has all the glory and the other voices are just supporting the harmonies. And so you can see that here, this is the first half and then this is the second half. After this point, you would then add accompanying patterns. So if you remember in the very first video what I played that they aren't just playing whole notes, they're often doing these repeated bum, 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 they're doing these kind of rhythms that get added to that. And that's the last thing that you would do once you have all the harmony and everything um, and all the inner voices figured out. Okay, so let's, uh, I'm gonna play this for you uh, so you can hear how this sounds without the rhythm in the lower voices. stop it there uh, to stop on the second repeat because I want us to end this video with one last thing which is a talk about harmonic rhythm. So normally music uh, or primarily music generates motion through a melody. We listen to the melody and that's what moves things along. Okay, um, but the pattern of chord changes is a secondary way music motion is generated. And I've been showing you how in a minuet, we actually slow down the chord changes at the beginning of a minuet. Um, and this is really important um, because when we, uh, we can create music motion through this secondary activity, which is called harmonic rhythm. Um, and when we slow something down at the beginning, we create tension and kind of a, um, we move it forward through the end. So, so harmonic rhythm is determined by the changes of the chord root, right? So if you notice uh, from what we were writing before, you could go from a first inversion to a root position or a root position to a first inversion, the root of the chord remains the same. So that means that there's still a holding, you, you, your ear recognizes that as the same chord, but once we change the root, then that creates, um, that creates the motion. So if we're holding and then we're holding and then we move very quickly, that, that will is what helps moving the motion forward. So in a minuet, the harmonic rhythm generally begins slow as I've been emphasizing and speeds up the cadence to heighten the music's intensity. Um, so this is really important for this harmonic rhythm. And I'm gonna show you one last example. This is the second half of that Ina Klein and Knox music minuet and trio. Um, and here you can see it does exactly what we've been talking about. It starts on a tonic, holds it for two measures, goes to a dominant, holds it for two measures. Then we have a speeding up in the second half, a one chord to a six chord to a two, five, one. So in that last measure, there's more chord changes than in the first, or the same amount of chord changes as the first four. So there's this real intensification of the harmonic rhythm. Okay, so I'm just gonna play this uh, very quickly for you, just this first half once, and then this video is done.
Okay, and this ends all the videos on these introductions to harmonic rhythm, um, or sorry, the introduction to the minuet.